Hello all, welcome to the project audio processing using machine learning. So now this is one of the projects which is included in the audio domain with using machine learning. In that, in this project, we will be seeing how we can process different audio files to may to do some use do some machine learning uh, projects and other activities. So during the course of this project, we will learn about different audio features and their uses. Likewise, when you get uh, a feature in a stable tabular data, right, in a structured data, there are different features with the help of those you do a prediction. So similarly in this, we'll be taking an audio file, we'll be extracting different features, we'll be seeing what are those different features and how are they used. So now, how we we'll see that how we can extract all these features using Python and how to visualize all these features, okay. So this project will give us a brief idea on how machine learning is applied to audio files. Now uh, in the tabular data and structured data you have different features you have a dependent variables you have independent variables but what happens in the form of an audio file an audio file is a form of uh, a wave a signal how can you deal with that how do you process something a thing like that so uh, any audio file is in the form of numbers it is in the form of numbers when you break down and you break down you'll get in the form of numbers so what we'll be doing we'll be doing the same thing we'll be extracting different features and there are different features uh, and we'll be seeing what are those different features and how and what are their applications to use in the field of AI and, uh, and machine learning. So now moving on, what is audio processing? So as uh, given in the figure, uh, one audio input audio signal is there and it is written that audio signal processing system and it will give you some data and it will give you a processed audio signal. So metadata is what are uh, numerical uh, features, okay, the one that we have converted from the audio signal to a tabular data and another one is the processed audio system. That is what we are giving out, like right? converting uh, all of those things. Like if I want to perform a denoise operation, like I want to remove the noise, what I'll be doing, I'll be taking that audio system. I'll be converting it, I'll be processing it, converting it to a metadata, changing it with that and then again converting it to a processed audio signal and that will be my whole result. So now in this, uh, in a, as a definition, audio signal processing is a subfield of signal processing that is concerned with the electronic manipulation of audio signals. As I told you earlier that audio waves are signal, these are nothing but signals. So it comes under the evaluation of signal processing. Signal processing is a field which deals with alteration or processing of signals it can be used in many of the industries i have uh, we have one video of wavelet transformation project also that also deals with signal trans signal processing there we have used something called wavelet transformation now and the similarly here we'll be using something called fourier transformation so these are all techniques of signal processing so audio signals are electronic representation of sound waves longitudinal waves which travel through air consisting of compressions and refractions as you all know you might have heard in your classes from 10th to 12th classes sound chapters that audio signals are nothing but electronic representation of sound waves so what we'll be doing we'll be seeing those sound waves we'll be visualizing those audio processing is a kind of data analysis and pre-processing technique which is performed on tabular data which is similar to, uh, to tabular data in primitive machine learning projects with the same processing techniques which is performed to tabular data in machine learning projects it is similar to that here only it is known in the, it is in the form of audio signals so now applications of audio processing so now i have told you that we'll be doing audio processing but what is the main motive behind it what are the things which we can do with the help of audio processing and other sound ai applications so some i have listed some uh, applications like the data compression if you want to compress your music file you have certain features you have certain video website on the net that compresses your audio files but how do you exactly do that you do that with the help of machine learning with the help of machine learning you do that music information retrieval speech recognition these are certain hexapods coming on there are certain speech bots coming uh, nowadays this recognizes your voices they are voice activated these are all done in the name of machine learning sound ai noise cancellation audio enhancement all of these features which are present in your audio um, micro uh, which earphones uh, earpods or noise cancellation audio enhancement these are all the virtue of machine learning and we'll be doing those processes we'll be seeing how these processes are completed 
so now understanding the problem statement so in this we will be working with a small audio file just for the sake of uh, uh, intra introduction we will be using that audio file and we will be extracting features features like time domain features what are different time domain features what are their applications we will be performing Fourier transform and seeing its application we will be seeing about frequency domain audio features and what are their types and how are they used I'll be explaining each and every feature and their use in the notebook section and we'll also visualize all of these. So now the timeline of the project will be we'll be loading the audio file, we'll be seeing it, how we can load our audio file in our notebook, we'll be extracting time domain features, we'll be doing some Fourier transform, we'll be I'll be telling you what Fourier transform is, what are his applications, then we'll be understanding some frequency domain or advanced frequency audio domain features. So now let's begin. Hello all and welcome to the next section of the project which is audio processing using machine learning. So now this is the notebook section in the earlier section that is the introduction section we have seen that what we will be doing in this project what is audio processing and what are its different applications. So now moving on to the notebook part like the implementation part here I'll be telling you how to load audio files what are those different audio features what are their applications and how are they used and how can we visualize them. So now let's proceed with the timeline of the project like first we'll be importing libraries and audio file then we'll be understanding our audio file that you'll know, come to know in a second what that means then we'll be extracting time domain features we'll be doing some Fourier transform then we'll be extracting frequency domain features. So now I'll be telling you each and everything in this uh, section so let's begin. The very first thing you need to do is install this library. So now this library is Librosa library. So the Librosa library is one of the most important libraries in the field of audio processing because it has all the features. Now if you if you go and search for it, if you go and search for it. So now what we'll be doing, it will be containing all of the different uh, features, all of the different libraries which will be there. One second. So now when we'll be searching Librosa library, the, this is the documentation package. This is a Python library which has all the different features, which has all the different features which are used for audio pre-processing techniques. You can have a look in it. You can see all what are the different things present. Let's see that there. this is the installation instructions, tutorials, troubleshooting, API documentation, core ID, display, feature extraction, one set detection, beat and tempo, spectrogram decomposition, effects, temporal segmentation, each and everything which is done in the field of sound AI you will be finding in this library so now it is written that uh, for more advanced introduction which describes the package design principles please refer to Librosa paper at Skypy 2015 so now this as written it is a package for music and audio analysis so this is a very important package which is uh, in the field uh, available in the for in the field of audio processing so what you have to do, you have to install this feature. You have to install that using pip install a browser. Also, I'm using this in a Jupyter notebook environment because I'm using that in my local computer machine. You can also do this in the Google Colab. The only thing difference is you just have to import your files in a Google uh, Google Drive to, uh, to import. Uh, to use those files in Google uh, in Jupyter notebook you can directly use these files this is the only difference in Google Colab and Jupyter notebook Google Colab runs on a Google server that is the uh, their own server which if your computer is not that good it, it is not responding much you can use Google Colab so that it will be uh, so that you only need to have a good internet connection and it will work fine. So now this is the only difference all the function and everything is same in these so now moving on I have installed Librosa. You know what I'll be doing? I'll be importing this. I'll be saying import Librosa, import Librosa dot display. Librosa dot display, which which it it will help me in displaying the all the different plots, all the different plots which I'll be plotting of those audio features. I'll be importing import ipython dot displayed ipd. So now what is this? This is a library in Python which which helps us which helps us in uh, loading our audio files into a Jupyter notebook which helps us in loading the files into our notebook okay any of the notebook then this is numpy that is matplotlib for normal visualization so now if you want to if I want to load my audio file what I'll be doing I'll be just saying ipd.audio this is the ipd which I've imported with the help of ipython.display ipd.audio then I'll be giving my file this is my file I'll be providing you this file also so when I'll just import it I'll be importing these libraries then when I'll just learn it when I'll just import it then okay as you can see my audio file is loaded this is my audio file so now as you see that uh, 
Uh, in the farm, it is. Uh, I have loaded my audio file in my notebook. If I'll play this. <laughs> You know, as you see, this is a 33 second audio file which we'll be doing the processing with. So this IPD library is used to load my audio files in my Jupyter or in my notebook environment. So now the next thing is we'll be reading our Librosa file with Librosa library. So now the one thing we have done is we have export, we have imported our file in the audio format, but we can't process any of this. This is only for listening our files into our audio. From this is a comparison between my different graphs which will be plotting and will the original audio file. But how do we actually read this file in a tabular data? So we are this is where Librosa library comes in. So now this is a feature Librosa.load and we will give that file. What it will do? And I'm I'm giving two different uh, two different uh, features. Okay, two different parameters. One is the music. I am telling this music in this music. What it will do? It will st I'll store be storing my all the numerical values of my fee uh, audio file because as you know, all of these audio files are in the form of wave and all of these wave has some numerical values. So the all the samples, all the sample values will be storing in my this variable and sample rate. The sample rate it is basically fixed. The sample rate is something which is used in the musical domain. If you want to do uh, go more about it, you can Google it. What is a sample rate? If we are uh, if you want to Google it. So now sample rate will be fixed. Okay, Librosa uh, uh, load as uh, this value with a particular sample rate. So now when I'll just run this, then I'll say bring me the sample rate on all of these things. This is my shape of audio file. Okay, as you can see, what I, if you want to see what is music, then I'll just write here music. So this is an array. Okay, this is an array of the values of those audio signals. So these are around seven lakh ninety. 3,739,329 samples okay these are this much value this has okay so this is what my uh, my audio signal converted into a numerical format and this is my sample rate that means that this audio file has a sample rate of 22,050 okay this is my sample rate so now if I want to see what is the duration of one sample okay this one sample how much this how much this last how much time this last what I'll do I'll just say I'll just create that is uh, equals to one upon sample rate okay because as you know there are this much samples and this is my sample rate obviously if I want to see that what is the time of my one sample I'll just divide it and I'll just I'll just print it and say duration of one sample is 0 0.000045 seconds as you know this how small how small of fraction this is this is how small my value is this is the uh, this is the length of my one sample this is the one tiny fragment Based on this, the on concatenating all these samples, we have our audio file. So this is what uh, one sample looks like. If I want to see what is the total samples, so this is the same as the shape. Okay, this is the same of the shape. Seven lakh thirty nine thousand three hundred and twenty nine samples. Now, if I want to see that, okay, what is the duration? We already know the duration, but uh, if uh, in order if you don't know this library if you want to see what is the duration of your library in seconds what you can do you can just see you can say that duration is equals to one upon sample rate that is the duration that is the duration of one sample multiplied by total samples okay this is what because this is in seconds so this is basically a simple math a simple math in mathematics so i'll just say duration of whole value 33.529 seconds similar to as you can see this is 33 so this is showing me 33.529 seconds now the next uh, thing in this section which we'll doing if you want to visualize this now I have seen this audio if uh, I if I want to visualize it I can just say I can use the Librosa dot display uh, library as I said if I want to visualize my audio signal I'll be using this Librosa dot display I'll be just pass the parameter Librosa dot display dot wave plot I want a wave plot okay if I want to see more plots you can uh, always go to this documentation and see what are the different plots available I want a wave plot I'll just say music is my total uh, and now I'll not pass the uh, file okay I will pass the music the categories the values because on the basis of that only it will plot a plot okay so now it will plot a wave plot so now let's see 
and we'll just say the title is sample music so now this is your time domain wave plot okay so this is their time 0 to 33 seconds and this is your time domain wave plot this is the different time interval that 0 to 1 which is the value which is present here okay this is in the currently in the time domain this is in the time domain and this is your wave plot in the time domain okay as you can see now if you'll see that wherever wherever this is the magnitude is high that means there is uh, a higher note and wherever this is the low that means there is something a lower note okay so now this is what uh, your audio signal looks like you may have seen this in various uh, different softwares and all of these things so now you can do this on your own this is pretty cool right so now in the next section we what we'll be doing will be understanding what this is and we'll, we'll be extracting different audio features on the basis of this so let's move to the next section come to the next section of our project in the previous section, we have seen the introduction of our audio processing, wow, why audio processing is required and what are its application. And we have seen that how we can load an audio file, we can display it using a wave plot. And we have done, we have loaded our audio file in the form of matrix, in a form of array, which came out to be around 7,39,329 samples. So this is what we visualize. So now in this section, we'll be extracting time domain audio features. So now what are these time domain audio features? These are the different features which will be helping, which will help us in doing the different techniques, which will be helping us in doing different machine learning techniques. And these are present in the time domain. That means we have not converted this data into a frequency domain. We are just practicing it with, with reference to time. That means in this time, at, the, at particular time, 0 to 33 seconds, what is my frame value? What is my sample value? Okay, it between Z minus 1 to 1. What is my sample value? So this is what it comes under a time domain. The sample value with reference to time. Now there are three different main features. The one is amplitude envelope. Second is the zero crossing rate and third is the root mean square energy. Now the very first is the amplitude envelope. Now what is this amplitude envelope? Now amplitude envelope is the maximum value of all the samples in a frame. So now when you will see that the, all of these peaks, all of these peaks. Okay. So these are maximum values, right? The maximum value in a frame. So what is a frame? We'll see it in a second. So now these are the amplitude envelope gives us a maximum all of the maximum values present in a frame that is what amplitude envelope does. So now if how we can use it how we can define so now we can always define a function in that we will be saying frame size is 1024 this is a constant or this is the uh, constant frame size which is used by all of our uh, all of, all of the people now if you want to see what is a frame size you just type 1024 because that is the normally uh, size of a frame size and the another one parameter is hop length so now this is for hop length now now suppose why i am using this hop length suppose this is my frame okay this is my frame size another one is my second frame size another one is my second frame size now let's say we have created around 500 to 550 frames with this with a size of frame size of 1024 samples okay 1024 samples will be present in one frame so now but what it will happen that all of these frames are created now there will be some point where when this will then one frame will end and another frame will start there will be some point which will be left okay it will not get overlap so this may uh, create a discontinuation because the frame is ended and another one is starting from the next fresh value that will create a discontinuation so what we use we use hop length what it will do it will use it will overloop overloop those frames suppose my 1024 values are there and one frame uh, ended and another frame started so now i've created a hop length that is 512 values of sample values what it will do it will just overlap those two frames okay so now by that way or no none of our values will get left or there will be no discontinuity present that is why i am using this hope you uh, find out what those are and uh, you understood what these are used for i'll just define a function amplitude envelope where i'll be passing my signal i'll be passing my frame size i'll be passing my hop length i'll be saying amplitude envelope and st storing it as a list i'll just say for i for i in range 0 to length of signal length of signal is basically all of the length the signal that is that like around 3 how much values we had uh, 
uh, all seven lakh these values the samples all of these length so it will be getting all the values from it so it will be getting all, each and every single frame i'll say amplitude envelope current frame is maximum maximum of signal i'm just this is just a list right i'll be saying that signal i i is my first range and another frame and another frame is what the next frame okay the, this is the signal and other one is the next signal so find out the maximum value in between those find out the maximum value in between those so this is what uh, uh, it does okay and then i'll say i'll just append that maximum value append that maximum value in my list so by that way we will be having the maximum value in each frame maximum value in each frame then the where this hop length is used because it, see here for i in 0 to length of signal okay length of signal and else hop length i'll just that means that it will hop to that particular signal it will just take uh, 512 then it will just hop from 512 to another one that that means that is the meaning that is the function it will do this is a single i loop and this is the third parameter which we give so now i'll just say return that amplitude envelope in a form of an array in a form of, of an array now what i'll do i'll just uh, tell you i'll just say uh, I'll just make you how this works. I'll just store that into a music a amplitude envelope and a music that is the values which we stored. And then I'll just pass all these parameters. Music is my parameter and frame size is 1024 hop plus is 512. So now if you want to see how many frames are produced because I as I said that frame size is 1024. That means around 1024 samples which, which will be there in one frame size now if there is around of around 7 lakh samples now if you'll divide it with 1024 it will be approximate around 5 uh, 1445 frames this is just basically the total length of the uh, that divided by the frame size that is what is done here okay that is what it is done here so this uh, the frame size i is my zero suppose it is i it is zero and the frame size is 1024 like 0 to 1024 samples that is one frame so this is how 1445 it will if you will multiply 1445 into 1024 it will give you the exact 7 lakh values that that is the meaning of that i hope you get it so this is my if you want to see the, all those values now it, if you want to see this a music these are all my now if you want to see the shape Sorry, if you want to see the shape, 1445. There are around 1445 values because each value for one single value for each frame. One single value for 1024 values. That the a one single value, the highest value in that frame, the highest value in that 1024 values. That is my frame, that is my amplitude envelope. Now, if I want to visualize this, how this will look in this plot, I'll just say, I'll just say, okay, frames, I'll just, I have to do the frames. Okay, what are the different frames? Frames is range of length a music. 0 to length of this, the length 1445. And I'll just plot as another parameter t. That means in the in that way we have to convert these frames into another dimension that is time. There is a there is a function in the Librosa called frames to time. What it will do? It will convert these frames into time domain because we have to plot it in that time. Okay. So now it will just convert it into frames to time. This is an inbuilt function in the Librosa. I'll just pass these frames and hop length is 512. I'll just say Librosa dot plot wave plot music. Then I'll again say that this will plot this plot. Okay. Then if I want to plot my amplitude envelope, what I'll say? I'll just say plt dot plot t that is my all the time and a music so this is my x uh, this is my x uh, axis that is the t which i converted my frame size into time with the uh, function as with the function frames to time so this is my t now it uh, what it will do it will just convert or it will just plot all my amplitude maximum values in this wave plot now if you'll just see if you'll just see i'll just plot it okay so how beautiful this is see all of my maximum values are plotted in this all of my maximum values are plotted in this so this is how amplitude envelope looks like all of my maximum values in a frame it is there all of these values are there so this is what amplitude envelope looks like now you might be wondering what is this used for what is the use of it so now the applications applications of amplitude envelope are it gives the maximum amplitude value in a frame it gives the maximum amplitude value in a frame that the we thought we see here gives a rough idea of loudness okay now it is uh, uh, it is very simple like if we will be having higher peaks 
that means our sound is very loud it is very simple if you will be having higher pitch that means the magnitude of my sound is higher so now by seeing this a, fun a person can tell okay the how what is the loudness of this sound this uh, we can see this is not that much loud sound because we have it have a very low peaks it have certain low peaks but in this the peaks are high the peaks are high so you can see that okay give this gives us a loudness uh, this general idea of the loudness then another one is for used for music genre classification or one set detection so based on the loudness we can again tell what is the genre of the music now it it it, it is jazz it is continental it will have different loud if it is rock then it will having a great loudness it is a melancholy music it will have a less loudness so this feature this feature is used in the for different algorithms for music genre classification so this is how it is used so this is all about amplitude envelope the next two features are zero crossing rate and rms velocity which we will be discussing in the next section hello all and welcome to the next section of the project so now in the previous section we have seen some different aspects of audio processing we have loaded our data then we have extracted our audio time domain audio features we have seen what are the different time domain audio features in that we saw what was the amplitude envelope how it was used and what are its application so as as discussed earlier amplitude envelope gives the maximum value of a sample in a frame we selected the frame size is 1024 that means 1024 Two for samples which will be present in a frame. We have a total number of around one four four five frames produced in our audio file. So now the next feature is our zero zero crossing rate. So now what is this zero crossing rate? Zero crossing rate is the rate at which a signal crosses the negative value to zero and then to a positive value. Now if you want to understand it, how you can understand it? Suppose if a signal is there and it goes from this it goes from here and it is in the zero that means it is a pause then it goes from here and then it again goes to a low pitch sound it is go again go to a low frequency and again go above so the zero crossing rate is basically the rate at which a signal crosses from a negative value passing through zero to a positive value that is basically the zero crossing rate so now what how you can extract it so with the help of librosa there is a feature called librosa feature dot zero crossing rate in that you just have to pass your frame size you pass your hop length that is 512 i i told you what was hop length used for it is used for uh, overlapping our signal so that we don't have a discontinuity so this what it will do it will just give us those zero crossing rates it will give us those zero crossing rates it will just executed now if i want to see if i want to see what is my zcr so these are my values okay now if i want to say how big this is shape 1445 as uh, expected that we have around 1400 1445 frames so that's why we have 104 1445 values so this is in a single frame in a single frame what is the zero crossing rate so 1445 frames we have 1445 zero crossing rates you'll understand it better if we'll just visualize it so the same thing i am just doing frames is the range of zero to length of this value t is my i am converting my frames to time the similar process which we did earlier in the in the visualization part i'll just say plt dot plot t which will be my x domain and zcr is my y value so now when you will see this so this is my zero crossing rate so now as you can see this is my 0 to 33 my total length signal and this is my whole value now what does this mean what does this peak mean this means that the my zero crossing rate is higher that means in a single frame my value has crossed my from positive to negative at a larger time then with respect to the, all of these so now if you want to understand what this gives us what information can we have this you have to think a little bit again everything you do you have to think you have to apply your brain how you can interpret those things it, it is not a spin feed a spin fooding technique that if someone shows you okay this is this and you have to do this you have to think so what uh, what can this zero crossing rate be used for it what can be what can this be used for now if you will think that what this is what it is what it is telling you the the rate at which a signal is going from negative to positive now suppose if the signal value is zero the zcr value is zero what does it mean that means the signal has not either crossed from zero to positive that means the signal is stationary what does that indicate 
it indicates a pause it indicates a pause that means no single activity has done has been done in that particular time domain that means that uh, there is no single no audio uh, present in that so this can be used to identify pauses in an audio frame similarly the applications are can be used for recursive versus pitch sounds similarly recursive versus pitch sound that means if a, uh, the, the, a person is a, uh, it is having a high pitch that means it will be actually having a less uh, zero crossing rate because it will be in the higher domain every time then to find out voice unvoiced decisions similarly the i that i told you that voice the pauses the voice is where the we have the zero crossing rate and the where we have the zero crossing rate as the value zero that means it is unvoiced that is a pause value can be used to find out mono uh, monophonic pitch similarly we have uh, the, uh, we have a audio signal in the form in the upper region only that means in a, it is a mono pitch sound. so this is how we can use this okay this is the application of zero crossing rate now the another one is the root mean square energy so now this is similar this is similar to the amplitude envelope the only difference is the amplitude envelope gives us the maximum value the rms will gives us the root mean square of all the samples present in a frame the only difference is that we can just use this with the librosa.feature.rms this is the feature this is the beauty of librosa library all of the features all of the things are present in that only you don't have to do much you just write librosa.feature.rms you pass the parameters that is the music frame length is frame size that is 1024 hop length is 512 it will give you all the rms values the visualization is the same the frames and the t i'll just say librosa.display.wave plot to display that wave plot and just i'll say okay plot dot t dot rms music so as you can see how big this is so now this is it. now if you want to plot these in a single plot what will uh, what i'll do i'll just plot this i'll just take this and i'll just say i'll just say okay i'll just paste this a music okay and i'll just say color is blue now as you can see how beautiful this is okay so now this is my amplitude envelope which is blue in color that is giving me the maximum values and the red color is my rms that is giving me the root mean energy values of all of these things okay so now where is this rms energy used this is the similar to use of amplitude envelope it can give you the rms value of all samples that is also a conductor of loudness it is or can be used for audio segmentation and music genre classification so this is the similar feature this is one of the feature like if you predict in a car price that what is the number car price what is the number of doors what is the how what is the engine type similarly here if you want to predict something you have to see what is the rms value of all the samples what is the maximum value of all the samples so this is what is done so these were all the time domain features the minimum the important time domain features we learned about amplitude envelope zero crossing rate and root mean square energy now the in the next section will be learn about fourier transform what is fourier transform and what are its applications hello all and welcome to the next section of this project so now in the previous sections we have seen that how to display an audio file and we have seen all the different time domain features what are those different time domain features and what is the use of it so now in this next section we we'll, what will be doing is we'll be seeing and understanding what is fourier transform so now fourier transform is one in the only most important technique in the field of audio processing because what it does it converts the our audio from time domain to a frequency domain it to a frequency domain for with the help of that we can do several different uh, operations from it so now what is a fourier transform a fourier transform is a mathematical transform that decomposes function depending on space or time into functions depending on spatial or temporal frequency such as the expression of a musical chord in terms of volumes and frequencies on its constituent notes so now what that is, what does it mean so what it the fourier transform does it is a basic Uh, it is a mathematical operation that takes a signal and converts it in the frequency domain in the in the base of its spatial or temporal frequency uh, if the chords on the base of the different chords the this do the frequencies of those chords suppose i am playing a violin i am playing a piano and each node each button has its frequency so now what this will do it will just convert that value it on the basis of that frequency the frequency of that node it will convert it on that so that is pretty cool right if you want to see what is fourier transform in a more deep manner we'll just see 
what is fourier transform so this is what a function of fourier transform looks like so this is what fourier transform looks like this is the function the uh, the uh, the function of this and what it will do this is the function in time domain in the form of cos and sin which we saw earlier so this is my time domain function or what it will do it will just convert it into a frequency domain all the different frequency domain the with the help of that function so it is a more of a mathematical side if you don't want you don't have to go deep through it because uh, it is uh, for the domain knowledge if you want to gain more domain knowledge you can definitely go to it and it is actually very much important to understand what Fourier transform is and what are the different Fourier transform like the short time Fourier transform and FFT, FFT to better understand or if you want to seriously work in the audio domain you have to understand what Fourier transform is so now the applications okay what are the applications of a Fourier transform the, and the one is the spectrogram and mill frequency capstral coefficients. The spectrogram is a very important parameter or a feature which is used by different audio data scientists to visualize their data, to understand the data. And another one is the mill frequency capstral coefficient. So now this is the one of the most important feature which is used in audio classification. How? I'll tell you in the moment. So now the very first thing is we'll just apply Fourier transform. So now all of those mathematical things, all of these different uh, complex applications, how do you do that? Simple. It is present in the Pandas NumPy library np.fft.fft. Now why I am writing this two times fft.fft because fft1 is the library and in that different other features are also present like sft and all of the short time Fourier transform, another Fourier transform. So in that we are selecting Fourier transform. So I'll just say FFT music. Uh, then I'll just apply my Fourier transform in that. It will just give me those values. Okay. The uh, all of those values in the time domain are now converted in the frequency domain based on the frequency of those particular nodes. As expected, we have around the same length of values which we had the samples. Now I want to plot a magnitude spectrum like uh, which we plotted uh, here the amplitude uh, time domain spectrum. We also plot a frequency chart. I'll just define a function in that it'll say plot a magnitude spectrum. I'll just say signal, the sample rate, the title. I'll just say FFT music. It will be performing Fourier transform. Now the one thing is when we'll be perf when we perform a Fourier transform, we have two values. We have a complex number actually. Uh, the, but we don't need that complex part. I hope you know what complex numbers are. Again, if you want to go into shift into an audio domain, you must know what are complex numbers, how Fourier transform works. You can again have a, a great, there are great YouTube channels present who, who, who are specializes, who specializes in the audio domain in the field of machine learning. You can watch those videos. The one is the sound of AI and you can watch those videos. Most of my references from there. You can watch these and it will give you a much more detailed information what Fourier transform is and how it is used. So now FFT ABS what it will do it will just say np dot absolute the all of these things present are in my numpy library only it will what it will do it will give it will tell it will give me my absolute value only the real part of that value i'll just, i'm storing it in my fft dot abs okay i'll just say plot a figure and f is my i'm plotting a number of random values between 0 to my sample rate 0 to my sample rate with the length I'm just saying okay with the length of all of these the around 7 lakh how much these values are plot th these values in between 0 to sample rate and I'll just create bins I'll just plot my though plot those bins uh, which are which are necessary in for for plotting my frequency table so now uh, when I'll plot this value I'll just say music is my that value and SR is my music it will auto, with this function it will automatically be converted into Fourier transform that will give me my absolute value and it just plot this I'm just plotting my value is sample music title sample music I'll just say okay this is my magnitude spectrum so now as you can see most of my frequencies are in this region okay are in this region this is the count and this is my in this region around zero to uh, the less frequency and higher frequency the medium frequency are very less so this is my magnitude spectrum this is my how frequency is distributed okay so now the next thing is spectrogram the one of the first 
application of fourier transform the first application of fourier transform the this is the spectrogram in this the similarly what do, this uses the short time fourier transform now there are two types of fourier transform the in the spectrogram uses the short time fourier transform it basically uses a smaller window for transformation again you just have to, if you want to go deep down i'm saying you can always google for fourier transform it and learn about it it is a pretty big topic and it is for another video it is an another topic so what it will do will just store will perform the law short time fourier transform and now this time we'll be doing this with the librosa library it has also this feature then i'll just perform this frame size we'll be keeping is 12048 and 512 is our hop size which i have discussed earlier also now if we'll see what is the type this is complex as i said earlier that fourier transform produces a complex number we but we don't want a complex number we want only want the absolute values so what we, what we'll do i'll just store it into a value ssft.abs i'll just say np.abs the absolute the same absolute np.abs and ssft i'll just now see now it is converted into float because we only have the absolute values now if i want to plot this, if we want to visualize this i'll just define a function plot spectrogram i'll just plot a figure and i'll say librosa dot display dot spec show i don't have to do nothing i'll just say i'll pass the librosa dot display library i'll just pass my parameters the y uh, sample rate and uh, hop length and y is basically my this the whole value okay y y axis sample rate is my sample rate hop length which i have giving y axis is linear okay so now i just this is the color bar this is nothing this is very simple i am just plotting my spectrogram so now this is my spectrum but you see this is completely black so what is this because this is because our frequencies as you see that we our frequencies are in a very low domain we have a very have many number of frequencies are very low between 0 to 500 only okay 0 to around 7000 the maximum of our value frequencies lies here only that is why it is performing in a normal scale it is completely black because 0 to 5000 it is black only that's why it is showing this so what we'll do we'll convert our values into log scale that way we'll be having a better disturb better uh, better visualization so we'll also we we'll use the power to db a function which will convert my scale into log scale and we'll just say y axis is equals to log earlier we used y axis is equals to linear when you see this okay sorry it is saying s s, s f f t is not defined okay sorry i have written s s f t s s f t S S F T. So, as you see, this is my spectrogram. So now, how good this is? This is all converted into my log value. This is also in log. This is also in log. It is describing my all the frequencies. Where it is, the node is higher. It is converting a higher value. And wherever this is a low node, where this is a pause. So these frequencies are particularly mainly used if there is a voice, if there is a speech, and if someone is speaking and it gives a pause, so it will be completely blank here. That means there is a pause. Also, this is all of the different uh, uh, categories this is the visualization the people who are in the sound field they will be understanding it better so if you want to go again you have to understood it you have to learn about it this is a simple overview how you can plot these things if you want to enter in the field of sound ai this is a pretty interesting field and has a lot of scope in it so this is my spectrogram you can just read it you can find out different details all of course the experts can do it more you can find out you can extract different details from it and the spectrogram can definitely from this we will come to an important feature called mill frequency sepstral coefficients which will be understanding it in the next section and we'll be also seeing the frequency domain audio features what are those and what are those applications hello and welcome to the last and final section of this project so now in the previous section we have seen what are the different time domain audio features what is fourier transform and what are its applications so now the very first application we saw was spectrogram we have plotted this spectrogram the another one is the mel frequency sepstral coefficient so now these are the one of the most important features which are used in audio classification if you will be doing one audio classification project we will be definitely using this mel frequency sepstral coefficient so what are these so in sound processing 
the bell frequency sextal is a representation of short term power spectrum of a sound based on linear cosine transform or the log power transfer log log power spectrum on a non linear bell scale of frequency mfccs are coefficient that collectively make up an mfc so now this may look a little bit more technical but it is not that complex what it does it basically transforms as it uh, as it is written based on a linear cosine transform or the log power spectrum on a non linear bell scale of frequency it basically transform this data on a log power spectrum on a non linear bell scale of frequency so there are different uh, match function how is it performed again you don't have to go that much deep in it but if you want to understand it better if you deep if you want to deep dive in the audio ai field so you find you definitely have to check this out what are these things and how it is performed numerically here i'm showing you how can we perform this in a more of a uh, with the help of python now if you want to extract mfccs so this is a very simple technique this is a very simple way because we have librosa of course i'll just say librosa dot feature dot mfcc i'll just pass my parameter i'll say mfcc is 13 this is basically a level of document they are decomposition kind of i'm saying compute 13 mfcc i'm just saying can tell the sample rate is sr so now this is my first order mfc this is my mfcc now if i want to go deep down it if i want to extract more information from it what i'll do i'll just compute the derivatives of those the one is the delta mfcc i'll just say feature dot delta i'll be it will compute all of these derivatives then again it will do it will compute the second order derivative so see how advanced this librosa library is all of these things are done at your fingertips now the last thing you have to do is you have to visualize this. This is a very simple show. I'll just say librosa dot display dot spec show. I'll just pass the MFCC value again. As I said, that librosa does all the work for you. It will just plot these. Okay, this is my different MFCCs. This is the color bar for obviously the different uh, values. These are the thirteen regions as we have said here thirteen. Now the next, if you want to, if you want to see my delta MFCC, that is my first order. This is how my MFCC is decomposed. Earlier it was 400 to 100. Now it has around 30 to 40. Now if I again want to see what is my second order derivative. So it, as you see that it is decomposed to 20 to plus, minus 20 to 20. So this is my MFCC. So this is my actual MFCC. This is my first order MFCC. And this is my second order MFCC. So now these are used in audio classification because each every uh, ev suppose if I have a sound of cat. Okay. It will have a certain amount of MFCC. Now if I have a sound of dog dog barking so it will have different mfcc so with the help of these these can act as a feature so we can use this to classify this so definitely if we if we'll pass uh, if we'll hear one sound it will definitely classify it and it will say that okay this is my dog sound this is my cat sound so this is how audio classification works this is the use of mfccs so now the last thing is advanced or frequency domain audio features. So now I'm not getting into the extracting part because that is a little bit more technical. If you want to deep down into audio features, you can definitely have a look at these. But I will tell you what these features are and what are these used. So now the next is the band energy ratio. It is basically the ratio of lower frequency bands to higher frequency bands. That is nothing but when you see in this spectrogram, this is my higher frequency band, okay? The, because it's it in the orange part. This is my higher, this is my lower. So it is what it does, it is basically the ratio of all both these, okay? What and what, why it is used? It is basically used for music and speech determination and music classification. It is used in comparison of energy in lower higher frequency bands and it also measures how dominant low frequencies are. Obviously, if my ratio is higher, that means my frequency, low frequencies are high. Okay, that means my low frequencies are more dominant. Now, similarly, the another one is spectral centroid. Now, the spectral centroid is a measure used in digital signal processing to characterize a spectrum. It indicates whether the center of mass of the spectrum is located and it has a robust connection with the impression of brightness of a sound. It basically measures the brightness. Now, when you see the brightness of a sound, basically means that how soft and how melancholy that sound is okay it calculates the weighted mean of frequencies so what does it do it basically uh, take all of these frequencies the frequencies which we created the with the fourier transform it create the, it converts it calculates the mean of it and gives us that and how it where it is used similarly in the music classification and audio classification we can just we simply do the mean of mfccs we can use that in the media video classification for a more accurate results so, 
this is the all the features which we are this is most of the features which we used in an audio processing the time domain the frequency domain and the Fourier transform so this is the basic overview of all the different things which you can possibly do in an in a sound signal with the use of machine learning this is a very broad field and it has a very much scope if you want to deep down go deep down in it you can definitely check it out this was a brief introduction of all the audio ai field we'll be doing some different projects also in in the next playlists you can see that also uh, and this is all the review we can simply do this with the help of noise reduction the applications are music classification music genre classification noise reduction denoising all of those things which can be done so i hope you like it i'll be providing you the sample audio file and this notebook you can understand this practice this and you can even practice these also okay you can google this and you can see that how these are also performed with the help of uh, machine learning but again these are a little bit complex you first need to have a good programming knowledge and all of the understanding of all of these things in order to understand these so i hope you like it thank you